Time is the most measured quantity in the world. We use it to plan our lives, find our way, and make our fortunes. Because so much depends on accurate timekeeping. Paul wasn't of this opinion. Paul the Apostle said in Galatians chapter 4, verse 10, Ye observe days, months, times, and years. I am afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. Paul goes on to say, But now, after that you have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn you again to the weak and beggarly elements, wherein you desire again to be in bondage? The world tells you that time is essential to planning, to making money, to your happiness. How many times you've been in experience where you had to get to an appointment on a, at a certain time or you had to be somewhere at a certain time and you didn't make it in time and you became sad or upset or depressed. Can you see how that time affected your emotions? It affected your attitude. How many times in your life do you find time affecting your attitude? Paul said not to observe days months, times, years. So how can we escape this? Paul said, In him we live, we move, we have our being. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Can you even imagine living a life like this? Where you don't go by the 24 hours in a day, but everything you do is based upon being led by the Spirit of God. You don't go anywhere unless you're led to go there. You don't say anything unless God tells you to say it. You don't do anything unless God tells you to do it. Do you realize that's how Jesus Christ lived on the earth? He said, I can of my own self do nothing. What I see the Father doing, I do. It is not I that speaks, but the Father that speaks through me. Jesus did it, and he said, Without me, you can do nothing. Now, we want to take that word nothing, and we want to change that word to nothing to something like most of the time. Well, he didn't really mean Nothing, as nothing. Yes, he did. The Bible says we enter into God's rest when we cease from our own works. We cease from our own works. Now, the video you just watched before this was a video that's been made by the United States government, NIST, a department of the government. And... They think it's their job to make you happy. They think it's their job to make sure you stay in their plan. Well, do you realize that time is like the world? We're not supposed to be living in this world. I've heard them saying, oh, we're of the world, but we're not in the world. No, we're not even of the world. We're not in the world or of the world. We're supposed to be living in the kingdom of God on this earth. We are representatives of God's kingdom. We are ambassadors of Christ. We are living epistles. We're not even supposed to look like the world. We're not supposed to be anything like this world. In fact, when the world sees us, they should see what they might call an alien. Yeah. We should be so completely different than this world that when they look at us, they should think we're strange. 
And it used to be that many times Christians were looked at as a strange bunch. Nowadays, they're almost blending into the world. We're not supposed to blend in. We're not supposed to be like the world. We're supposed to be so stark and so contrast to the world that when they see us, they know that we are not like them. Separated people. A peculiar people. We are supposed to be a set-apart people. A chosen people that God has chosen for himself out of this world. Maybe the reason why we can't get free and why we can't seem to come out from the world is because we're still living by what they call father time. Do you realize that the world lives by what's called the atomic clock? And do you realize the word Adam is in the word atomic? And they really believe that Adam and Eve, they really believe that Adam was not actually a human being. They believe that life, Adam and Eve, came out of the Adam, A-T-O-M. Yes, that's what they believe. They believe in the Big Bang Theory. It all just came from the Big Bang, from the Adam, came from the Big Bang. Well, I'm glad that I'm not of this world. Amen. My creator is God. He's the creator of heaven and earth. I thought about this the other day and I'm closing. What if Jesus would have turned to those that were following him or if he would have turned to those that were walking with him and said, I'm your creator. Hmm? What if Jesus would have looked at the Pharisees and said, I created you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They couldn't even handle it when, when he worked miracles, when, when the miracles were performed. He created all things. He's the creator. He's not just a man or a prophet or one of the ascended masters. He's the creator of heaven and earth. He's the great I am, the mighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. So don't get caught up in Father Time. Amen? Get caught up in the Heavenly Father. Get to know your Heavenly Father. Jesus' whole thing was for you to know His Father. Father, they might know you. That they might know you. Hallelujah. Knowing God the Father through the Son. Becoming one with them. That's what it's all about. That's the glory of God. Father, they may be one, even as we are one. They may behold my glory that I had with you before the world was. God bless you.